Thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm going to talk about accuracy privacy trade-offs for uh, differentially private protocols. So what do I mean by that? We're going to look at the accuracy parameter of a differentially private protocol and see how it behaves as we change the privacy parameter of the protocol. So uh, let me quickly recall the definition of differential privacy. It was formulated by Dork and her co-authors in 2006. And the definition says that a uh, mechanism f hat <coughs> is absolutely differentially private if for every two adjacent inputs x and x prime and for every subset of the outputs s, the following two probabilities are uh, within a multiplicative factor of e to the power epsilon. The first of these probabilities is the probability of hitting the set s when the input to f hat is, is x, and the other uh, is the same probability when the input is changed to x prime. And here, uh, by adjacent, I mean that the two vectors are within a Hamming distance of one from each other. <coughs> uh, why differential privacy? Because uh, it has proven to be a very uh, robust measure of privacy. And it is by now the established uh, standard for pri many privacy applications. And by itself, it's also a very interesting theoretical notion which has connections to uh, uh, many other areas such as machine learning, statistics, uh, complexity, and even cryptography. Um, <clears throat> the typical model for differential privacy is the client-server model in which a curator holds a database and issues differentially private answers to the queries of a client. But we also consider the, the distributed setting in which uh, the, data, the, the database is distributed uh, between two mutually distrustful parties. And in this setting, the mechanism f hat is an interactive protocol. At the end of which, uh, the parties are going to learn a view. And uh, we say that the mechanism is differentially private if each of these views uh, can be seen as epsilon differentially private mechanism over the inputs of the other party. Uh, this is all for the definitions. And uh, we know by now that differential privacy comes at a cost, meaning that some error must be added to the output of the function in order to make it differentially private. And uh, much of the research in this area is about uh, designing uh, differentially private mechanisms f hat for functions f. Uh, typically, they consider deterministic functionalities and in the client server setting. The focus of this work is the interactive protocols, and we want to understand how error behaves in this more complex setting. In particular, is there an accuracy gap for functions as we go from uh, the setting on the left to the setting on the right? And uh, even though it's a, it's a very natural question to understand this gap, very little is known about it. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, if we restrict our attention to natural functionalities, then the only two functionalities for which we can prove that there is an accuracy gap is uh, Hamming distance between two vectors and uh, their inner product. Um, <coughs> and this leaves uh, a lot of uh, natural open questions. For example, can we prove that there is an accuracy gap for every uh, non-trivial function? Uh, and we don't know the answer for even simple uh, Boolean functions such as computing the end of two bits. Uh, and how large is this gap? How does it behave? Uh, and this is the f uh, addressing these questions is the focus of our work. Uh, to address these questions, uh, we are going to consider uh, interactive differentially private protocols for computing two-party Boolean functionalities. And when we are dealing with Boolean functionalities, the only measure of accuracy we can think of, the only natural measure of accuracy we can think of is the probability of correct output, meaning that what is the probability with which f hat is equal to the actual uh, output taken over the randomness of f hat. Uh, and since you can define this for every pair of input, we are going to focus on the worst case. Uh, as far as the model of computation is concerned, I'm going to only focus on the information theory case. We are going to assume that the parties are semi-honest, meaning that they follow the protocol instructions and do not deviate from it. And finally, uh, the functionality is, uh, that we consider is the symmetric functionality, meaning that both parties must receive the same output. And why Boolean functionalities? Well, they provide a very clean abstraction to study, and they have been used uh, in the literature many times for, for understanding the complexity of interactive protocols, starting from the work of Chur and Kushilwitz. And although they might be limited uh, uh, in applications, many privacy questions can, in fact, be formulated as predicates. For example, does smoking cause cancer, and so on. And, and finally, um, even for Boolean functionalities, we don't really understand uh, how the accuracy, uh, accuracy gap behaves. The only Boolean functionalities uh, prior to this work for which we know that there is an accuracy gap is the, is the dot product modulo 2, and it follows directly from the Hamming distance work uh, of uh, McGregor et al. in Fox 2010. Uh, and let me quickly mention that if we go back to the client server model, then for uh, Boolean functionalities, we can actually achieve the optimal possible accuracy uh, by simply perturbing the output with probability 1 minus a, where a is uh, this, this bound. This is known as the generic uh, differential privacy bound, and I'll, I'll use it later. So let's go back to the interactive setting. Uh, to obtain our bounds on the accuracy, 
uh, we are going to analyze the, the, uh, the transcripts of differentially private protocols, and this is going to be our, our main object of focus. In particular, we are going to focus on the following two uh, conditions. The first is the fact that tau was obtained via an, an interaction. And second, because tau is a transcript, it's a part of the view, and therefore it must satisfy the differential privacy constraint. To capture these formally, I'm going to switch to the following matrix representation. For every protocol tau, I'm going to write down a probability matrix. <coughs> the columns of this matrix are uh, labeled by the inputs of the first party, and the rows of this matrix are uh, labeled by the inputs of the second party. And each cell uh, has, uh, represents the probability that I receive this transcript as a result of the interaction when the inputs are fixed to little x and little y. With this notation, uh, it is known that uh, if the protocol, if tau is a protocol transcript, then the following condition, called the protocol compatibility condition, must be satisfied uh, by these probabilities. Uh, it's a very standard condition, and uh, it's known as the copy-paste condition in the communication complexity world. Uh, the second condition, namely the differential privacy constraint that must be satisfied, uh, results into the following linear inequalities, and this follows just by the definition of differential privacy. Um, and finally, because these are probabilities, uh, we have a few more constraints, namely that they should all sum to one. And what I have done by now at this step is that I have converted the requirement that tau is a transcript of a differentially private protocol to a set of constraints, which are mostly linear except for the uh, top right corner. The main technique that we have in this work is then to take this large program and convert it into a short linear program. It's large because there can be exponentially many uh, transcripts, and we're gonna show how to combine them to obtain a short linear program, which is much easier to analyze for specific Boolean functions. Uh, and the, the first step in doing so is to uh, replace this quadratic constraint uh, via a linear constraint. And to do so, what I'm gonna do is that replace this constraint by the convex hull of the set of all points which satisfy these constraints. So let me go into more details. Uh, think of each transcript matrix as a high dimensional point in a two to the power two n uh, dimension space. Uh, 2 to the power 2n is the size of the, uh, of, the trans uh, of the truth table of the function here. And then the set of all matrices which satisfy our constraints represents a manifold uh, in this high dimensional space. So here is a plot of uh, the projection of a four dimensional manifold onto the hyperplane P00 equals to 1 and is set here to 1, meaning that we are studying a Boolean gate. Uh, so the point I'm making here is that instead of considering uh, this manifold, uh, I'm going to switch and consider the convex hull of this manifold, and in particular the convex hull which can be represented by linear constraints. And somehow, magically for this particular setting, it turns out that if we replace the quadratic constraint by, via the following linear constraint, then it actually represents exactly the convex hull of the manifold that we had on the previous slide. So this results in a linear program. Uh, we have uh, linear conditions. It's a large program, but that's fine. We can analyze it. And then to analyze the accuracy, we get a few more linear constraints, which gives us our complete program. And a particular accuracy uh, for, uh, for a differential pr private protocol is possible, is achievable, if and only if this linear program has a feasible solution. The only problem is that it's a large linear program, and we don't know how to analyze it yet. But uh, we show that you can actually combine these constraints and have a short linear program in a new set of variables where we keep one variable for every pair of inputs, and therefore the size of the program is only proportional to the uh, size of the truth table of the function that we are, we are computing. And we did analyze this program for uh, specific functions such as AND and XOR, and these are the bounds we get. And an interesting thing about this is that in going from a differentially private protocol to writing down the set of linear equations, we have lost a lot of information, but even then, for, for the case of n and XOR, these bounds are actually tight. It is very easy, uh, it's not, not that easy for n, but uh, trivial for XOR to come up with a protocol uh, which achieves this bound, uh, these bounds. And notice that both of these bounds are actually smaller than uh, the generic differential privacy bound in the client server setting, and this proves that there is an accuracy gap uh, between the client server setting and the interactive setting, at least for these two functions. To obtain, to obtain a generic bound for every Boolean function, we show that if the function is non-trivial, then there must exist two adjacent inputs on which uh, the truth table of this function embeds either an AND or an XOR. And if it does so, uh, then uh, the, every Boolean function is subject to the same accuracy gap. And this, this proves our main result. Uh, given these bounds, we can actually plot and see how the behavior of, uh, of the accuracy parameter of the differentially private protocol uh, changes as we, change, as we vary the, uh, the privacy parameter. <coughs> 
the, the blue line shows you the generic differential privacy bound, which is possible in the client server setting. And everything above this is, of course, impossible to achieve, no matter which model you are in. Uh, the red and green line show you uh, the behavior for n and, and XOR. And uh, we show that for, for these two functions, we can achieve, uh, uh, achieve these bounds unconditionally. And every Boolean function, the accuracy of every Boolean function must live inside this region. And this is really the place for, for cryptography. Uh, if there is an interactive protocol which achieves better accuracy uh, than these bounds, then it must go for uh, computational differential privacy. And we show that uh, every computational uh, that every protocol which achieves accuracy in this uh, setting must assume, uh, must assume at least one-way functions. But it could be that uh, specific functions require more complex assumptions. Obvi oblivious transfer obviously seems, uh, seems sufficient, but maybe uh, th this landscape is much more complex. Uh, to conclude, um, uh, we have shown that the accuracy in the two-party setting is, is a more complex object, uh, and uh, we show protocols, optimal protocols for end and XOR. We have shown that there is an accuracy gap for every non-trivial Boolean function. Uh, and in particular, we give a technique which can be used uh, to analyze specific Boolean functions to get sharper bounds. Uh, and then we show that one-way functions are necessary if you, want, if, you, if, you're gonna, if you want to go beyond these accuracy barriers. Thanks a lot. <laughs>